everybody so I'm going to show you how to do the it balloon um, since it chapter 2 is coming out I thought it'd be a good um, tutorial to show you guys so I just have my shirt which is 100% um, cotton um, uh, it's soaked in soda ash for a little while and um, got spun out in the washer um, then I have scissors, washable marker, sinew, and two sizes of rubber bands. Um, so the first thing I do is I try to get some of the wrinkles out before even folding the shirt. Um, it just helps get um, all the most of the wrinkles out before you fold the shirt. And then when you fold the shirt, um, you'll have more to smooth out, but it'll just be easier. So I just take the middle up here and the middle down here, flip it up, and then it's not even, obviously, so you just kind of fix it as you go. Um, make sure it's in half. And then smooth out any wrinkles that you have. You can kind of feel them underneath if you put your hands up under and smooth them out that way. You're not going to get every single wrinkle and that's okay because tie-dye is not perfect by any means. Um, and then I flip it over and smooth it on that side as well. Alright, so... Um, I do not use stencils. You can use a stencil if you want. Um, you can get them online or just look up a silhouette and print one out. Um, I freehand most of my stuff. Um, so I'm just going to freehand with a washable marker. So in the half, you, if you're left handed, you want to use the side. If you're right-handed, you want to use this side just because it's easier to draw whatever you're drawing. So in this case, it's the It Balloon. And I normally try to keep the design up on the chest. Um, you don't want it too low or else it'll be on their belly. Um, if you do it too high, it'll be right at their neck. So you want to do it about armpit length. So just start at the corner. You kind of make half of a balloon, and when you get at the bottom, there's that little part of the balloon that gets tied. So you want to flare it out some and bring it back in. And that's my half of a balloon. And then I'm going to show you um, the rubber bands and the sinew. The sinew you use to get a white line, it just keeps it. Um, a lot tighter together. Um, the white line I think looks really cool especially when you're trying to outline something. Um, so you want to get this in a position where it's going to be easy for you to fold and we're going to pleat fold this. So pleat folding is just taking um, a small section so I don't go all the way up past my first knuckle. I do it a little shallower just so it's easier for the dye to get through. So you take some sections and I just slide the shirt forward and grab it and pull it together. And you just want to follow the marker line to make a straight line. So every time you grab a piece, make sure it matches up with the next piece in front of that. Um, and move the shirt with you every time you do it because it's a lot easier. You don't have to pull a bunch of fabric. Um, sometimes this isn't easy, but... Obviously. So sometimes I just grab a piece like that if I can't for some reason get it. Um, Keep following the line. Um, the hardest part about doing this is when you get to a corner 
um, just like you do down here. Um, and I will show you exactly how I do that. So just keep following your marker. You want to do this with pretty much any design that you're going to do just because um, it makes for a good design obviously. So you're following your drawing that you made. So I'm just going to pinch here and then if you can see I'm at a corner you can see my little bit of marker right here. So what I do is I put my fingers underneath and pull it over and kind of make a tiny fold right there. And then you have another corner right underneath. So fold that up so the corner is in there. If you can see that. And then twist it again. And you only have this little bit, so fold that in again. And if you see that, it's a pretty straight line. And a slip knot. So um, for those of you that don't know, here's a little easy tutorial on top of a tutorial but you take the very end of it underneath and put your fingers on the outside and then hold it like this over top and then take these two fingers and grab the thread and then pull it and then you can make it bigger you can make it smaller but just for this I'll make it a little smaller because I don't need that much but all right, and then you very carefully, trying to keep this straight, go underneath your shirt, kind of line it up with your outline, and before I pull it too tight, I'm going to line it up, and I'll wrap this up so I don't have as much slack on it, but now what you do with this is I always put my hand right on the shirt as tight as it, as you can just so it doesn't bunch up and hold your spool like this and when you pull, pull it as tight as you can without undoing your slip knot. So it came out a little bit but it's tight. Um, so what I do now is carefully pick it up and I wrap this around three times. It's waxy, so when you pull it, you don't even have to tie it, tie it off. So it, you don't have to worry about it coming off unless you take it off. So tie it tight. Pull it tight, rather. And it's very tight. Very tight. So what I do now is the part that was part of the slip knot. I cut that really short because you don't need it. And then this part I leave pretty long because then when you go to take it off, you can find this and just unravel it. And that's all I'm going to use of the sinew, so I'm just going to put that off to the side. So this is your balloon. Now with the rest of the shirt is up to you, but the way that I'm going to do it is... Um, I'm just going to bunch it all together in a neat manner, so kind of like your pleat fold. It's not going to be as clean because the colors I have planned um, for this shirt isn't going to really need a clean fold on it. Um, so just kind of loosely pleat fold it and then tighten it up a little bit. And then this part, I always like the bottom part because you can take a section and pull it kind of to, towards you. And when you do that, it kind of makes your plate folds for you. They're not all the same height like this one was, but it's not going to matter much, especially if you're only doing one or two colors. So, that is that. So, this is, I'm just going to use rubber bands for this part. Um, because I do, don't want the white lines in it. So I have two sizes. I probably won't need the big ones, but the big ones are pretty big. They're pretty stretchy, but I want the shirt to stay together, so I got the loose ones. So it doesn't matter where you put them, just um, make sure that it's holding your shirt together and it's not just going to slip right out.
You can use the rubber bands as a guide for your colors if you'd like, but um, it honestly doesn't matter. So if you, say, if you did do a rainbow and you did red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, purple, and they bleed into each other, it's going to look good because all those colors mixed into each other um, looks good. So, um, But if you're trying to... Um, do a couple of different colors, but they're not supposed to mix like purple and orange or purple and green They make an orange muddy color. It's not gonna look good. So This is the tied shirt um, And then this is gonna get dyed um, I'm gonna do Red for the balloon outline it with yellow to represent the raincoat and then the rest of it I'm gonna do gray on top with black on the back and that's going to make a really cool black highlight effect. Alright, so we're at the dyeing stage now. So um, I always have my bottles uh, made before I start just so we can get right through it and get it done. Um, so I'm definitely going to start with the balloon um, section. Um, so I'm going to do red just like the um, It balloon. So it's going to come out darker obviously because it's wet. But you just get your outside really good. Um, you might be able to see after you let it sit for a minute that some of the fibers are still white. And it just means you didn't put enough dye on it. So. Don't do it so much where it's pouring out of the bottom because that will just bleed into the rest of the shirt. It always does. So just kind of get as close as you can. Don't do that. <laughs> Alright, so there's some white fibers right there. So I have to get that. Just a little bit. And... Remember, too, that you're going to flip this over and get it on the other side. So even if you don't get all of it perfect, you're going to be doing the other side anyway. So you're going to have more dye going in it. Um, so we're going to do our highlight with yellow. It's going to kind of be our representation of the um, raincoat. So just kind of go around the outside here. Doesn't have to be a lot. You could do a thin line or you can do a thick line. I like to do about that size just because if anything bleeds into each other, there will still be a highlight on it. Um, so the rest of the shirt, I'm going to do a gray. It looks black, but it'll be gray. So um, I'm going to try to kind of give this a little bit of room so it's going to look like there's going to be a white line here. Um, but you don't want to get too close. Darker colors tend to find the lighter colors and bleed right into them. So you can see I left a little bit of white in between and I didn't put too much down in there. So I'm going to go all the way out with this gray. And I'm not going to totally douse it yet. I'm just going to kind of get all of it covered in gray just to show you. And like I said earlier, too, you can do whatever colors you want um, just because I'm kind of celebrating the Halloween season and it's coming out. Um, I am doing kind of like the cover of it, if you have ever seen that. Um, so I just kind of want to show that in my tie-dye. So I just get the rest of this. The back, the um back of this shirt here in this area is not my favorite because you have so many loose ends um, but you can see too there's a lot of white spots in here so I'm just gonna go through and get as much as I can and obviously if you run out of dye you're gonna have to make more but I did good enough it's not gonna matter um, but then we're gonna flip this over but before I do that, I always have a rag on me. Um, this is my tie-dye rag. So I just wipe my hands off. Or if you feel better about it, you can rinse them off. 
Um, so when you go to flip the shirt, um, because you have dark colors everywhere, but you have a little bit of light, if you're going to touch the dark color, just touch the dark colors. Don't try not to mix, but when you flip, flip it in an area where you're not going to drop it in a different color because the dye is still on this rack somewhere. So I can see a little bit of red there, but it didn't really bleed throughout the rest of the shirt. So just make sure that you're not dropping it in more dye somewhere. So. Um, we're going to go through again with the red and you don't need a ton because you already put a lot on the top so just kind of go through and fill in what you didn't get. So that looks pretty soggy to me so I'm going to stop there and then get your highlight. And you can really use any color to highlight. You can even leave a little bit of white, but I like bright colors too. So I'm going to use the yellow. And then, so I did gray on top, and this is going to be black on the bottom. So when you open the shirt, it's going to be all gray with black highlights all the way around the balloon, so it's going to look really cool. But you have to be careful because the black always bleeds out so if you put black too close to this yellow it's gonna just all turn black so I'm gonna start way back here by the rubber band and then I'm gonna come out this way I'm not gonna go too close to the yellow because it can ruin the whole shirt um, if it takes some of that highlight away it's not gonna look as cool it's not gonna look like it's highlighted it's just going to look like an accident. So when you put the black on here, you don't need a whole lot. Black um, spreads pretty far. Um, so instead of looking for your white fibers like I taught you earlier, just literally cover whatever spots you didn't get with the gray. And you can see there's a lot of white fibers still sticking out here. But that doesn't matter. It's still going to look awesome. So just, I'm just going to come a little tiny bit closer. Just a tad. And you can see it bleeding out. But that's all I'm going to do. And then I'll leave that white. So even if that white line is still there, it's still going to look really cool. And you're not going to ruin your highlight. Alright, so then... You can either put this in a bag, which since there are dark colors, I wouldn't put it in a bag just because it could just bleed. So after um, we dyed it, we let it sit for 24 hours, and then once we rinsed it, it goes in the wash. Um, I use Synthrapol because it keeps the colors where they're supposed to be. If you leave any white in there, it stays white, and you can wash more than one shirt at a time. Um, I do it on hot um, with cold rinses, and I let mine hang dry. Um, I just don't like put them in the dryer and then I steam them afterwards. Um, so this is the finished shirt before I use the puffy paint. This is the IT balloon. So what I'm going to do with this, um, I have white puffy paint um, and I'm not going to show you how to do it because it's super simple but you take white puffy paint and you just do a simple straight line 
down the shirt. I wouldn't do it all the way past the hem here, but I would put it, you know, pretty close. But it will look like the it cover of it. So, pretty cool. That's my tutorial on the it shirt, you guys. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.